The Night Beat starts right now. Breaking news as we come on the air tonight. Shots fired and police are now trying to piece together evidence in a northeast side neighborhood. What officers are sharing in this case? And Military City USA playing a role in the humanitarian crisis. The Pentagon now approving Joint Base San Antonio Lackland to help with housing. But what about the Freeman Coliseum? Plus, booking a COVID vaccine appointment is easier said than done. We're going to tell you how to improve your chances of getting one coming up. But first, just days after we saw some rain and hail, another potential for storms tonight. Yeah, live cam giving us a view over San Antonio. It looks pretty clear out there right now. That is likely going to change. Meteorologist Adam Adam Kasky tracking it all tonight. Yeah, Stephen Isis, we actually have a, very, a fresh watch in our area, a tornado watch, meaning that conditions are favorable, not just for severe thunderstorms with straight line winds and even large hail, but the potential even for some isolated tornadoes. This does include Bear County, Medina County. You get up into Guadalupe County and points westward, basically along Highway 90 and up into the hill country. Again, no tornado tornadoes out there right now. No warnings out there right now, but in the atmosphere conditions are favorable for some development as we go through the night. Here's the latest look at radar. The activity basically in the I-10 corridor between Junction and Sonora and earlier a couple of hours ago, we had a severe storm in northern Edwards County. That has moved out of there, but we are expecting more development to the northwest, which will gradually work its way southeastward towards San Antonio late tonight and in the pre dawn hours tomorrow. I'm going to time it out for you. Have the future cast tell you a lot more about it coming right up. All right, thank you, Adam. I want to take you back to that breaking news on the city's northeast side. Police confirming one man shot in the shoulder tonight. That victim trying to drive away from the scene. Yeah, it happened on Winsford. That's near Bridal's near Bridal Way. That's not far from Walsham Road and New World Drive. Police say witnesses saw several people running from the shooting. Officers now looking for three suspects in the case. The victim was taken to the hospital is expected to survive. No word on a motive in all this. Also new developments in the response to the rise in unaccompanied minors crossing the border. Joint Base San Antonio Lackland will temporarily house those children who've crossed the line between Mexico and the United States. The Department of Defense approving that request tonight. It comes a day after the Department of Health and Human Services made the request. A vacant dormitory at the base is set to be used for the children. While the military is providing a place to stay, it will be up to Health and Human Services to make sure these children are taken care of. The last time JBSA Lackland was used to house minors, unaccompanied minors, was in 2014. Fort Bliss in El Paso is also being used as a temporary location for these children. And when it comes to the Freeman Coliseum, Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says discussions are continuing for that facility. I think there's discussion of potentially housing up to 2100 is the number I heard um, at Freeman. Again, this is a, a humanitarian effort. I Again, no final decision has been made for the Freeman Coliseum just yet, but JBSA Lackland will be used as a temporary shelter. No word on when the children are expected to survive to, to arrive. Excuse me. As unaccompanied minors make their way to and through the city of San Antonio, faith based organizations plan to help. But as one local church tells the night team's Jaffney Gray, these efforts will look a lot different than what has been done here in the past, helping children who are all alone and in some cases, reuniting families. The City of San Antonio and the Interfaith Welcome Coalition, including the Travis Parks Church, are in constant communication, trying to figure out how to best serve migrants. You know, we're going to have to learn more from the federal government. We're going to have to learn more from uh, uh, the agencies on the border of how they want to best handle and appropriately handle uh, this uh, certain population. Associate Pastor Gavin Rogers has experience with helping migrant caravans. In 2018, he walked alongside 10,000 migrants. He says there is a clear difference between that situation and the current situation at the border, a surge in unaccompanied children, something they haven't dealt with on this magnitude. It's not as easy as just opening up a temporary shelter or a, uh, a migrant shelter. It's going to have to be done with a lot of care and some great nonprofits who are willing to see these cases through to make sure that these migrant 
uh, minors find the right family members that find the right host homes to take them in. The church plans to serve as a respite center for migrants needing extra care as they arrive or as they prepare for their next stop. He says the government needs to step in with well-trained nonprofits to deal specifically with unaccompanied minors. Rogers says in order for any plan to be successful, the dialogue surrounding immigration needs to change for the benefit of everyone. The migrant community, the people in color in San Antonio, to the Latinx community, that really can take the lead on this because they understand it the best. They've experienced it for themselves. They understand the, the cultural dynamics and that voice needs to be lifted up. I believe that some great solutions can be found where uh, we can maybe speak less politically about this and more humanely. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Now, there is a child migrant facility just two hours southwest of San Antonio in Carrizo Springs. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says the facility can hold up to 952 children and houses immigrant children between the ages of 13 and 17. Video shows supplies and clothing are distributed to the children who arrive there. The first group this year arrived on February 22nd. Our coverage of what's happening at the border continues on www.ksat.com slash border. And tomorrow on the Night Beat, we will take a look at a new operation that's adding manpower to the Texas-Mexico border. The mission that expands from land, air, and water tomorrow on the Night Beat. Cracking down on street racing. San Antonio police say an increase in arrests and car seizures has led to less street racing in what's known as takeovers, but city and police are exploring stricter punishments and fines to deter others in the future. The night team's Patty Santos tells us why they're looking to the city of Dallas for help. Texas cities are cracking down on street racing. Houston police this weekend confiscated vehicles and weapons. San Antonio seeing its own takeover events in parking lots. What they're doing is they're setting the, the ground on fire and then they're they're driving, they're doing donuts in it. Every star on the map shows areas where San Antonio police say they've seen street racing or takeover events since September 2020. Police Chief William McManus says with more than 100 arrests, 200 citations, 69 vehicles towed and weapons taken away, they're sending a message. The word on the street is that don't go to San Antonio because you'll lose your car if you do. He's now looking to Dallas to beef up enforcement. In May of last year, that city passed a law that went after spectators and seized racing cars. The assistant Dallas police chief says it's working. If you're at, at, at a scene of one of these events and you're out there cheering them or you're out there watching, filming, whatever, uh, you're, you're um, giving a citation. He says in seven months, they've handed out 700 spectator tickets, towed 650 vehicles and made 1,200 arrests. We've had individuals have been killed as a result of these takeover events. Community has made it very clear that they want us to do something about it. San Antonio Public Safety Committee members Wednesday said they want to see more data, hear from impacted business owners and legitimate car clumps before they determine if that extra enforcement is needed here. One car club president supports stricter rules. I think that if you are a local from within the community and you're supporting it and participating in it, there is a consequence to those actions. And the chief says they are looking towards a Senate bill that would increase the penalty for those involved in street racing from a misdemeanor to a state felony, a year in jail, and up to a $4,000 fine. That bill is in committee right now. Steve, you see? Thank you, Patty. New information in an early morning rollover that left one man dead. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying the man as Albert Araiza. It happened on the northeast side on Eisenhower Road, not far from Woodlong Parkway or Wood Lake Parkway and Walsham just before 1.30 this morning. San Antonio police say Araiza lost control, rolled over and was thrown from his vehicle. Officers believe speed was a factor in the crash. No other vehicles were involved. A woman trapped inside a burning home killed overnight. 68-year-old Maria Trevino was pulled from the east side home on Runnels early this morning. Her son and another man who were in an unattached backyard apartment managed to stay out of harm's way. The cause is under investigation, but relatives say they believe a space heater in another room may have played a role. 
We are still watching the skies as we prepare for storms to roll in. Still head on the night beat, an update from meteorologist Adam Kasky. And they are experts at finding COVID vaccine appointment slots. Vaccine hunters now sharing their tips on how to get one. What time is the best time to score a spot? Some call them vaccine angels. Yes. And a Texas music legend visiting vaccine recipients in San Antonio. And an update on the pandemic here at home. Next on the Night Beat. An update on the pandemic here at home. The seven day average continuing to drop. It now stands at 160 cases per 24 hours. No new deaths were reported today. There is one more new COVID-19 patient hospitalized since yesterday. A total of 183 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital tonight. 63 are in the intensive care unit. 37 are on ventilators. By the way, tomorrow evening, the Alamo Dome will open 30,000 appointments for the COVID-19 vaccine. Those slots will be open tomorrow at 7 p.m. They're reserved for those 50 and older or those with underlying health conditions. You can register online or by phone. A reminder, you can stay up to date on information regarding the COVID-19 vaccine and where it's available on our website. Just go to ksat.com slash vaccine and speaking of those vaccines everyone will be eligible for a vaccine beginning on monday which means vaccine appointments might be harder to find you may have heard of vaccine angels or vaccine hunters people who volunteer their time to find other people a slot we spoke with two of them today who share their tips and tricks for landing an appointment between Lisa Olguin and Karen James, more than 1,400 people have scored a vaccine appointment. One of their biggest tips? Two to four o'clock in the morning. I'm like busting people out oh, left and right. So the best time to book an appointment is overnight. Some vaccine hunters say pharmacy retailers like CVS, Walgreens, and HEB drop their appointments while most people are sleeping. At midnight, is when Walmart releases a bunch of them. So I started looking online at Walmart sites, Walgreens during the day, every once in a while, I'll just check on there and see, but they're, you know, it's just a constant looking at the computer, trying to see what's coming open. Another big tip, mass vaccination sites like the Alamo Dome and Wonderland of the Americas drop their appointments in batches and availability varies day by day. Be by your computer with your personal information ready to go and constantly refresh the page. And devote a good hour, two hours to that computer to look for that vaccine because it is gonna take you time. Finally, flexibility is key. Understand you're probably not going to get an appointment for the whole family at once. And if you're willing to drive a little, it increases your chances of scoring a spot. The further out you're willing to go, the better. If you're going to rely on getting something in San Antonio, you're going to be waiting. It's important to note that WellMed allows people to call in to book an appointment and allows bookings of up to four people at a time. We're also told signing up for text alerts with each of the providers can also be helpful. Hey, baby, ¿qué pasó? He's a legend. Take a look at this vaccine recipients treated to a special performance by Texas music legend Flaco Jimenez and some of his friends. He performed at the WellMed vaccine site located at the Elevera Cisnero Senior Community Center this afternoon. It's the first time Flaco's performed in front of a live audience since the pandemic began. This week also proved special for Flaco for another reason. He earned and learned that the U.S. Library of Congress selected his album Partners as one of 25 new entries into the National Recording Registry. What a treat for those getting their vaccine today. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Meantime, let's take a live look outside with live cam 69 degrees out there. Adam, what's the weather situation right now? Well, it's threatening later on tonight. We don't have any storms out there right now. You can rest easy for several hours here in San Antonio. Our time frame is not until after midnight when we could see some thunderstorms and some of which could become severe and of course wake you up and even some could cause damage. So let's talk about the primary threats tonight. Hail, maybe one inch in diameter or bigger. So that's the size of a quarter or larger. Wind gusts, straight line wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour and we can't rule out some localized isolated tornadoes. We don't expect them to be widespread, 
but a few neighborhoods could get hit, especially along and west of I-35 and particularly in the hill country. So let's get right to it. Here's the big picture across Texas right now. Of note, earlier today, snow in the panhandle. It's another one of those systems. But of course, the focus has shifted to the widespread thunderstorm activity throughout central Texas. We've seen already a decent amount of severe weather. Unfortunately, we're getting the rain that's coming at a cost. So we have had some severe thunderstorms right up there in the central part of Texas, especially just east of San Angelo and closer to Dallas. So far here in San Antonio, we really haven't had that much development and we're not expecting much development until we go through the nighttime hours. The main forcing, the upper level energy and a little surface cold front, they're not going to make it here until later on tonight, but they're starting to work their way into the hill country. And that's where we have the active weather already beginning. You can see some widespread thunderstorms, northern Edwards County, northeastern Valverde County, and even near Junction. Uh oh, you see this red box that just popped up? That's a new tornado warning, which includes the city of Junction. OK, so if you're in or near Junction, seek shelter immediately in an interior room. We're expecting more development as we go through the night. So let's go through our future cast very slowly here. This is midnight, more widespread activity west of San Antonio. We get to 1 a.m. It's still west of town, 2 a.m., mainly west of town, but those will be are the communities of Kerrville, Bandera, Pipe Creek, Lakey, Fredericksburg. That's basically all the way to through about 2, 3 a.m. We get to 4 a.m. and it's going to creep closer to San Antonio. We are expecting some weakening of that line as it moves here in the pre dawn hours tomorrow. Nonetheless, we could still have enough punch left over in some of those storms to give us some severe weather locally. We get into tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., a few showers lingering east of I-35, but that's it. So here's the breakdown for you here in San Antonio, Bear County, and even surrounding communities. This is you, Bernie, Divine, Castroville, Hondo, Floresville, uh, even as you get up into New Braunfels. This is very similar timing. 11 p.m. storms west of town. It's unlikely we'll see a pop up around here. It's possible, but unlikely. But any time between about 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., that's when we can expect some scattered activity moving into our neighborhoods and dumping some heavy rain with the potential of those straight line winds, maybe some localized large hail. And we can't rule out, of course, that isolated tornado chance. So far, just clouds out there this evening and tonight. Temperature wise, 70 in town, 66 Kerrville, 78 Catula, Del Rio now at 79. And for the most part, we're right around the 70 degree mark, 68 Seguin and Hondo now at 72. Tomorrow, a sunny day. It's going to be a beautiful day. The timing for storms is just tonight and before the morning commute tomorrow morning. Otherwise, a sunny day tomorrow, 56 in the morning, 80 for the high, low humidity, really a beautiful day, and a northwesterly wind at 10 to 20, so a little breezy at times. Friday, pretty much the same, beautiful sunny. Saturday, just some fog and drizzle in the morning, otherwise fine. Sunday and Monday, I really want to point out, take a second here to point out that Sunday and Monday, our confidence is increasing for what could be some more widespread and maybe some pretty beneficial rainfall. We like what we're seeing in the pattern. We just need more evidence to boost those rain chances. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you, Adam. All right. Were the Clippers sending a message to the Spurs tonight? After they lost to him on the road? Yeah, yeah. probably so. But in the words of Ron Burgundy, that escalated quickly yes, today. It and it was not for a good reason. When we come back, the Spurs open back-to-back -back games against the Clippers by being clobbered. And the Cowboys say goodbye to Alden Smith. We have breaking news regarding the Texas Longhorns football program coming up. Former Spur Kawhi Leonard making his return to San Antonio after the Spurs beat the Clippers in L.A. early this season. This is the first game of back-to-backs. Clippers jump all over the Spurs early. Nicholas Batum with a straightaway three, and the Clippers are up by 18 just like that. Spurs are able to put together an 8-0 run late in the first quarter. This Jante Murray bucket was part of that effort. Help get the Spurs within nine. Second quarter, Derek White with a three, and the Spurs are only down five. DeMar DeRozan cans a jumper. He had 15 of his 19 points in the first half, but Marcus Morris got loose for 20 points right behind Kawhi's 25. This three extended LA's lead back to 10. They would lead at the break, 67 53. Spurs start to share the rock to get the offense going in the second half. DeMar to Jakob Pertle to cutting DeJounte Murray for the reverse layup and the foul. Check out Lucas Samanich with the Euro step around Leonard, but it was smooth setting for the Clippers from there. Lou Williams knocks down the jumper. LA is up by 18 going into fourth. Patty Mills for three, but it's still a 17 point game, and the Clips go on a 6 0 run, and the lead's now up to 23. Pop waves the white flag, puts in the second unit. The final, the Spurs. 
for a second straight loss at home, 134-101, to 101, dropping them now to the eighth playoff spot. You know, we got to figure out and adjust as players. You know, the coaches are going to help us and do their job, but, you know, we're the ones out there. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we just, you know, got to go out and, and just play with each other and, and have fun and try to adjust to whatever they, you know, send our way. Back at it again tomorrow at 7.30. There is now less than 24 hours left for the NBA trade deadline tomorrow at 2 p.m. San Antonio time for the Spurs to work out some sort of deal for LaMarcus Aldridge before they will have to buy out the remainder of his contract. The guarantees a 15-year veteran, $24.5 million a season. Miami has been mentioned as the team Aldridge could wind up with, but only after a buyout that would make him an unrestricted free agent. Aldridge has already missed the last nine games after he and the Spurs decided to part ways after he's pushed to the bench. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have told pass rusher Alden Smith that they have no plans to resign him after just one season of wearing this star. That's according to ESPN. The report Smith, by the way, became expendable with a signing of free agent defensive end Terrell Basham. The 31-year-old had quite a comeback year last season with five sacks, including three against Seattle in Week 3. He was second on the team to Demarcus Lawrence with 33 quarterback pressures, 48 tackles, five tackles for a loss, and two fumble recovers, including one return for a touchdown. That's after he had been serving an indefinite suspension from 2016 to 2019 for numerous off-the-field incidents and violations of the NFL's substance abuse policy. Now that Deshaun Watson is facing no less than 16 civil lawsuits against him for sexual assault and inappropriate conduct by massage therapists, what could he be facing going forward? Should the accusations turn into criminal charges, that's when things could change for Deshaun, according to Newsweek. The NFL can place Watson on the commissioner's exemption list, but not if this remains a civil matter. Should it turn into a criminal matter, then the league could bar Deshaun for practicing or playing with the Texans under while the NFL completes its investigation. Washington principal team owner Dan Snyder has been given the green light by the NFL's finance committee to gain almost complete control of the Washington football team by buying out three minority investors who wanted out after the Washington Post reveals sexual harassment allegations inside the organization by employees over the last 15 years. According to the New York Times, the purchase of an additional 40 and a half percent of the shares would go for $875 million with the Finance Committee approving $450 million debt waiver that must be paid back by 2028. This deal still must be approved by 24 of the 32 owners, other owners as well, in the league's annual meeting next week. Breaking news tonight, the Texas Longhorns suspend spring football practice. We'll tell you why next. Just two days into their first ever spring workouts on a new head coach, Steve Sarkeesian, the Texas Longhorns have paused their spring practices as a result of student athletes impacted by COVID-19 protocols. In a statement released by the university just minutes ago says the Longhorn medical staff will monitor the situation. COVID-19 testing as a plan for some team activities are being reviewed, but all meetings tomorrow will be virtual and team practices will not take place for the next several days. Before returning to the court tonight, this is how members of the Texas Longhorns women's basketball team spent their day off in San Antonio on Tuesday, taking in the river walk with a barge ride to unwind and here's what they're doing tonight now going back to work in fact the texas longhorns right now in ucla take a look at that scoreboard for us if it's up they are leading right now over ucla and texas a&m gets a big win in overtime 84 82 jordan nixon with a game-winning basket in overtime nixon by the way with a game high 35 points the houston astros have reached a five-year 85 million dollar contract extension with right-handed pitcher lance mccullers jr according to espn the extension will start next season at the two sides at previously agreed to a one-year, $6.5 million deal for 2021 to avoid arbitration. McCullers is coming off of 2020 where he went 3-3 three and three in 11 starts with a 3.93 ERA and 56 strikeouts after missing last season following Tommy John surgery. Signing the 27-year-old to an extension was crucial since their ace Justin Verlander is out for the season after undergoing Tommy John surgery. So right now the Longhorns women's basketball team is in the process of trying to upset UCLA as we speak. And we'll have all those highlights for you tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Greg. Got it. We'll be right back. Severe storms likely tonight, especially in the hill country, but even locally, we can't rule, out, rule it out between about 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. So we'll be here to monitor it for you. Otherwise, sunny next couple of days. More rain chances Sunday, Monday. Thanks, Adam. GMSA with the latest at 430. Good night.